<laughs> Hi guys, it's Charna Goldsmith. I wanted to hop on here really quick and uh, talk a little bit about the wig world, myself, my company, and um, what seemingly is a growing industry of people that are really scamming other people and how you can protect yourself as a buyer and a little bit about my policy, my integrity, and what I hold by. And the first thing is that I've been wearing extensions, toppers, um, weaves since middle school. That's that's number one. Before I ever became religious and covered for religious reasons, I am um, an Orthodox Jew. I'm a Torah observant Jew, and I cover my hair purposely for that now. But before that ever happened, I was wearing helper hair. So um, part of how I started this company with my partner, who we're no longer partners, but we're still very close friends, is we were getting scammed. We were getting scammed left and right um, from buying wigs, from buying products that you know promised a cheap quick buy or promised the perfect situation and it was coming out and we were like, what is this? Like thousands of dollars wasted, the time you wait, the excitement, the emotional journey of saying like, this is gonna be the one and then it comes and it's like, it's, not, it's nothing like you expected. Um, I'm in the process of right now making a video that I'm gonna show you guys on a piece that I recently bought from a Chinese company, um, just to show you what they promised, what I actually got, and then how we can kind of fix it. But that's that's a video for a different day. So part of how I got into this industry and how I started was um, was like you, was like a wig buyer and, and navigating through a sea of lies and everything else and promises, it's not an easy situation. So. What I hold by with my company is trying to work with a buyer. And at the end of the day, I work from pe with people from all over the world, not just America. I ship overseas. I deal with people locally. Um, and and that being said, I am I'm a business, I'm a small business owner. I make videos. I'm out on social media. I'm putting myself out there. There's no way that as a seller, I would ever disappear on a client. You would never see me block somebody unless they were being verbally abusive, which that's never, never happened. Um, and I would never, I would never just disappear. So let's get in really quick to some, some like red flags to look for when you're buying from a wig company and how to protect yourself as a buyer and maybe a company that you don't want to do business with or that you do want to do business with. Um, so I'm going to be right back and we're going to jump right into that. Um, the first thing that you want to look for, which is immediately a red flag to me is if they're, um, an Asian company. Now, does that mean that all Asian companies are bad? Absolutely not. There is a growing list of suppliers on AliExpress and on Facebook that target the individual seller and that you can buy a Chinese wig for three, four hundred dollars and people have had good experiences. Does this mean that you're going to have that experience? Absolutely not. Um, and the reason that I say stay away from Chinese vendors, again, not all of them, but the reason that I do say in general, this is initially a red flag to me. The first thing is a language barrier. You're having a major language barrier in communication. You're having a time difference barrier. Um, let's not forget the politics of China. And many times when you're dealing with a Chinese seller, they are restricted in their internet access and certain things that they're allowed to do. So you could be communicating with somebody and they could disappear on you completely. And you are out $400, you're out $500, even if it's $200, $200 is $200. So um, there's a lot of like gray area in dealing with these, these companies and you're not getting your money back. Because to ship a wig, if you buy a $300 wig and you're like, I want X, Y, and Z and you get it and it's nothing like they pictured, nothing like the samples, nothing like you wanted, it doesn't fit you right, you are not paying the money to ship that back to China because it's not worth it for you. So what are you, what are you doing? You're out $300. The, the distance, the communication, the quality... I would say stay away. Um, the, again, there's a growing list of reputable factories out there that are like your mainstream Chinese factories that do a lot of branding. Um, I can put up a list of those in another video um, and maybe even do some samples of, of some of my clients have their wigs and we can do some testing, which I'd like to kind of get into anyway, but that's number one. Number two is if you're dealing with a seller, um, yeah, you want to go with reviews. Now, 
Um, I've had dozens of positive reviews and unfortunately, yes, as a seller, you're not going to please every single person. There's no way a hundred percent of your customers are going to be satisfied. That being said is the majority of a person's reviews positive. Do you know people that you can get in touch with that are like, yeah, I purchased a wig from this person. I had a great experience. This is what happened in my, in my process of buying a wig. You know, reviews are, are a great thing when you know the person in a personal setting or it, it's not a review that's on their account. A lot of people, what I notice on Etsy, um, their synthetic wigs are really big on Etsy right now. I have my account up and I don't do synthetics, but I'm seeing what looks like a lot of like um, fake reviews, like they're just fed into it. And I... I know that's another thing that China has been kind of notorious for is the fake reviews. They offer people free products in exchange for a five-star review, and that's kind of spilling into other areas. Um, I also don't trust when a company has their own website and they're like, look at our reviews, and it's just like typed in reviews, and I'm like, well, this is your website, and you could just type like, it's like Rebecca G says, this is the best wig I've ever had and it's on their website and there's no screenshot and there's no proof and I'm like, wait a minute, like did you just have your person like write a review on your website? When I when I say reviews, I'm talking about reviews for people that you know, if you're in a wig group on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, if you ask a person, hey, do you have positive reviews? I take a lot of screenshots of my reviews, whether they be on Etsy, whether they be on um, Instagram, whether they be in a text message where someone's like, this is great, I'm so happy, whatever it is. If, if people have that, that's a, that's a good start and a good basis to go on to it. Um, the other thing is if the person's answering you, the seller is answering you, look at the communication that you're having with the seller. Are they gonna have the patience to ask your question? I, I hold that anybody can ask me a question about any company out there. I will give you my unadulterated opinion on that company because I wash, I set, I style, I do other brand wigs. I live in Brooklyn, a lot of women uh, wear wigs and I see a lot of other brands. I'm never out there to trash another company, but I will say, hey, this is what I like about this wig. This is what I don't like. This is what happens with this brand wig. And if somebody messages me, you can ask me a hundred questions. If my phone is on, if it's not a Jewish holiday, if it's not Shabbat, I will answer as many questions as you have. You are not bothering me. Please ask them away. And you know what? At the end of the day, if you decide I'm not going to go with your company, I found somebody cheaper. I found somebody I like better. Okay, great. Let me know how it works out. Let me know what they're doing. Maybe I can improve my business in that area. And this is something as a buyer you should look for because if a seller is not going to take the time to acknowledge you and to answer and help you and walk you through the process. And they're just like looking for you to order. And they're like, yeah, 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 I don't, I don't have time for you. I don't have time for you. That's a red flag because if you have a problem and you come to that seller and you're like, I don't know, they're going to blow you off. They already have your money. They already have your money. You have the wig. Chances are if they didn't answer you before they had your money, they're not going to answer you after. And this is a really, really key discussion. See the response level. See, um... The communication between the seller and buyer and everything like that. The other thing is policy information. You really want to heavily review a person's policy and ask them questions about it. My policy for my company as of right now, which I'm sure will change as my company grows and expands and changes and I would update my clients. We give them a time frame. We say, hey, this is our time frame, minimum 12 weeks. The expectation of delivery is really important. I tell people minimum is 12 weeks because week six comes by. I don't want them to, to call me and be like, I have a wedding. Where's my wig? Hey, listen, it could come sooner. It could come not, you know, sooner. This is, this is what you're dealing with. So go over their policy information. Do they accept returns? Most places do not accept returns on customs. What's their policy if you get a custom and you don't like it? Well, are they willing to do a color correction for you for free? Because my company does. If you get a custom and you're like, hey, I want a darker root, I want this. Uh, we're going to go over. I send every client that orders from me, this is, this is what we don't guarantee. This is what we do guarantee. And if you have a problem with it, like we work with the client. We say, hey, okay, what's the issue? Is it a color? Is it this? You, you need to ask as a buyer the policy information if it's not already given to you. And really see the integrity and honesty of the person that you're dealing with when you're placing the order. 
Again, the worst thing that could happen to you as a buyer is you get a wig, it's not what you expected, and the person goes to you. They disappear, um, you know, and there's no guarantee that a, a seller will or will not do that. But if you do a little bit of investigation, a little bit of your own research, it should um, protect you as a buyer. I think that I'm going to uh, finish up this video talking a little bit about um, the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, you're never going to have a company that's going to be 100% satisfaction guaranteed. That being said, you know, what is the company willing to do to fix an error, to talk to you, to communicate with you, to make things better and, and things like that? Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate that in small businesses like myself, we are very reliant on reviews. And if we have somebody that goes haywire before you even get a chance to address the issue, how damaging it could potentially be. And somebody that really prides themselves on honesty and integrity and working with people and who I'm not, I'm not looking to take somebody's money and run. I'm out here. I have a family to support. I wear wigs. I've been there. I think that you really need to know your seller. You need to know your seller and you need to know yourself and you need to know your expectations. Um, the expectations of buying a wig, the reality is color matching is very difficult virtually, if not almost impossible. A lot of pictures that we see on the internet today, they are edited and filtered and put with ring light and natural light in this. That being said, Go lighter. I've said this before, order a wig that's lighter than you would naturally get. If you have a great colorist in your area, let her color it, let her low light it, let her root it. Do what you need to do. Get, get the hair as natural as possible and let a colorist that you're sitting next to with color samples under the appropriate light and that you can say, no, I, this is a little bit too red. No, this is a little bit too you know, yellow. I want something a little bit darker and you can have a conversation with because it's very, very difficult to match color. Looking from a photo virtually when I'm across the country or, or across another continent. Um, that being said, you know, we do our best to put out wigs out there and that are lighter and that can be manipulated and that can be matched as closely as possible to the image that you want. Um, but as a buyer yourself, you know, keep that in mind when you're buying. Also to, um, I guess hair quality, hair quality is something that you're not gonna be able to see online. This is where like reviews come in. This is where people that you're able to communicate with, maybe send a message. Hey, how does this hair feel? How does this last? What happened with this? You know, and as brands get bigger and you can kind of see them out in different places and people have had more experiences, that brand's reputability, reputability <laughs> will um, kind of grow and expand and, and you'll feel a little bit more confident as a, as a buyer, I would say. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, you know, please definitely drop a comment below and I'm, I'm really happy to answer anything you have. And, um, you know, without kind of, without kind of getting into it, I, I would love to hear some feedback or some questions, some concerns from anybody that experiences that you've had and things like that. Because again, as a small business owner, I'm constantly looking to better myself and to expand and, and there should be no gray areas when it comes to what do I do? What's going on? What, you know, it, it really should be as smooth and comfortable as possible when you are ordering a wig and when you're getting a wig. And unfortunately, I'm just not seeing that in the industry as much as it should be. So we're gonna, we're gonna look to change that. And please, if you have some suggestions, if you have some ideas, I'm open to hearing them and, and let's get it done. Let's get it done together. Thanks for watching, guys.